Hello, what's up? I'm Katie Bang and this is Oxer and welcome back to or welcome to our channel Hi BBNW2. If you're new here, make sure to join our family and hit that subscribe button and if you're not, thank you so much for being a part of my family. It means more to me than you could ever know and it means a lot to Oxer and also like this video because every time you like it, Oxer gets a treat. He wants a lot of treats. <laughs> so really quick, I'm Katie Bang. I am a dog trainer. I own my own dog training company called Katie's Canines. I love my job more than you could ever know. But owning a business, especially a dog training business, comes with a lot of responsibility, a lot of liability, and a lot of things I don't think the average person would know. Okay, so I'm gonna disclaim, this is the best job ever. I love my job more than anything. My job is literally my life right now and it's all I do. But it's one of those things where I think with every job, there's things that you wouldn't expect. So here's 10 things that I feel you should know if you're interested in becoming a dog trainer or if you're just interested in the, the side of dog training that people don't talk about as much. Number one is there's no days off. And what I mean by this is when you're working with dogs, especially with how I do it, we do a lot of boarded trains where dogs are here for two weeks long. and. A lot of people, when you do in-home trainings where you go to them and train their dogs, they expect you to be there on the weekends because that's the days that they have off. So you're literally usually working from Monday to Saturday and you have board and trains two weeks straight through and through and then as soon as you get rid of them, you get more board and trains. So you literally do not have a day off ever. Number two is dog training is a lot more working with people than it is with dogs. And I know this sounds crazy because you're like, wait, you're a dog trainer. But essentially when you are a dog trainer, you are training people how to communicate with their dogs and you are working with board and trains, yes. The only way board and trains are effective or any type of training is effective is if the human can communicate with the dog what they want. So in order for this to happen, as a dog trainer, you have to train the people too. And another big part of it is having people trust you with their dog. So you do have to do a lot of work when it comes to one-on-one -on -one relationships with all of your clients. There's a lot of checking in. There's a lot of dealing with people in order to keep dogs progressing in their training program. Number three is it's super crucial before you start that you decide what kind of dogs you work with. Okay, so the main difference between dog training and dog psychology is I can work with a lot of dogs that dog trainers per se can't. And this isn't because I'm more talented or more skilled, but it's because with dog trainers, they're essentially teaching dogs to do specific tricks and behaviors, where with dog psychology, I'm focusing on the dog's state of mind, and then I'm focusing on accomplishing the behaviors. For example, a dog trainer will go in and try to get a dog to listen to sit and down and stay where I'll go in and start to teach the dog pressure and release on the leash and all the behaviors I want before and their state of mind before I ask for specific commands. Now, because of this, I do a lot of rehabilitations with aggressive dogs, quote unquote. A lot of dog trainers will just work with puppies, beginner obedience, and it nothing's wrong, it just depends on what you enjoy the most. I personally, really, really, really enjoy working with the more challenging dogs. It makes my day more fun for me. But a lot of people get overwhelmed by those types of dogs and that would be somebody who would definitely have a way more successful career when it comes to teaching dogs basic obedience. Four, if you wanna be a successful dog trainer, it has to be your number one thing. And I don't even think this is just for dog training. I think if you wanna be successful at anything, it has to be the number one priority when it comes to taking up your time, what you're focused on, because you have to work on growing a brand and getting attention, and it's something that consumes your whole entire life. I love dog training, but it's one of those things where I would not be where I was today if I wasn't willing to work 14 hour days and if I wasn't willing to get up at 4 a.m. And it has to be your number one thing always. You're not gonna be able to go hang out with your friends because you have dogs at home that you have to work with. And sometimes dogs take longer than expected. It's not something where you clock in and clock out and work eight hours a day. It's something that you can be stuck with every single day working longer hours than expected to get where you need to be. Things don't work unless you do, and dog training is 100% and a testament to that. 
five. Most dog trainers are self-employed, and if you go that route, that means a couple of things. One, you're not only going to be the queen or king of training dogs, but you're going to be the queen or king of marketing. You're going to be the queen of king, queen or king of your social media. You're going to be the queen and king of accounting. You are going to be in charge of travel time, organization, planning, every single thing that goes into running a business and making sure that everything stays the flow, you are responsible for. You're responsible for growing and branding the business. You're responsible for organizing things and making sure everything runs smoothly and is in its place. You're responsible for the dog's safety and well-being. It's not just training dogs. It's a lot, lot more than that. And you have to oversee every single thing, especially when it's your own business. Six. Each dog is an individual. So I run into dogs a lot of times where people call me and say, hey, we hired a dog trainer and it didn't work. We've hired five dog trainers and we haven't had any success. And I always go in and get success and I believe that's because I see every single dog as an individual. And what I mean by this is I'm not one size fits all with my techniques. I use different techniques for every single dog that I work with and I'm very open-minded when working with a dog. You have to tell if a dog's a front of the pack, a middle of the pack, or a back of the pack type of dog before working with them. You have to understand how the dog thinks and how they respond to different behaviors because if you train every dog like a middle of the pack or front of the pack dog, then you aren't going to be successful at the back of the pack dogs. You have to be super open-minded when it comes to how you're working with dogs and how you are educating them and communicating with them so that you get the results that you want. There's not a specific rule book of this is how you get to A to B. Sometimes you go A, F, C, D, B. Like it's not, it's not one of those things where it's a straight road. You gotta be open, you gotta think about your options and you gotta work to get the results. And when you don't understand how a dog thinks, that's when it's your responsibility as a trainer or someone in the community to go understand what's happening and where the disconnect is with that specific dog and your communication. Number seven is there's no school. On the fact of there's no school, a lot of people ask me, how'd you become a dog trainer? And honestly, it was a lot of self learning. I had to learn, it was very hands-on, and I did a shadow program. So a shadow program is essentially where you follow a successful trainer, they teach you their methods, et cetera, et cetera. There's online courses, there's a lot. I personally am a fan of shadow programs. My personal guy that I went to for a shadow program was super abusive to me and all of his students, so I would never recommend him again, but he was super knowledgeable when it came to dogs, so I'm really grateful for that experience. I also got to, as a perk of working with him, I got to go to Caesar Mullen's Dog Psychology Center and learn a lot there as well, but it's one of those things where when it comes to learning how to work with dogs, you just have to make sure you really, really are proud of and back the person that you're learning from and the methods and understand why you're doing them because there are a lot of dirty people in the dog training world and a lot of dog trainers that shouldn't be dog trainers. Number eight is you can't help everyone. And this one, oh, this one irks me because especially when you care a lot about dogs, you wanna help every single dog. But at the end of the day, this is your career and it's your business. And if people aren't willing to use the methods that you use and work with you for their dog and really just swallow their pride and start to be really open-minded with their dog, then it's one of those things where it's not a good fit and you can't help them. Or if people aren't willing to pay for dog training, then it's not financially okay for your business to help that dog. It's one of those things where you will get frustrated because there's so many rescues and so many dogs that you want to help or so many people that don't understand your methods that you want to say, hey, this is why I'm doing this. It would be so great for your dog. But it's one of those things where I try to see it as going one by one and being grateful for every single dog I do help and letting every single dog I do help get the message out there of like, hey, this does work. But until then, it's one of those things where you just have to accept the fact that you cannot help every dog. You will really want to some days and it'll eat you up some days, but you can't help every dog and you are running a business at the end of the day. Number nine is organization is huge. Now I am going to explain this in a way that I just think makes it really, really easy to understand. Um, so when the pandemic happened with COVID-19, all my personal trainers for the gym had to start driving to me and they had all done online booking before. 
but all of a sudden they just started being late nothing was working and i was like why is everyone just a mess and no one really understood it but here's the thing when you're a dog trainer especially like with me personally i do in-home appointments where i go to people's houses i do consults at my house and i do board and trains at my house and then i have day camps at my house on mondays and wednesdays so there's a lot of planning and organization i've had so many times where people ask me why i don't do online booking and the reason is travel time you can never account for travel time you can't account for what dog you're working with and if the session's going to go over because you're never going to leave a dog until the training's done and so on that note I know which dogs take me longer I know what travel time takes me longer I know what board and trains I have that week and so I know what times I need to be home to guide the girls with them or what times I need to meet up with their owners so personally when I'm scheduling I'm so huge on organization and it's all on my planner it's all in my phone and I do it all hard copy in my notes and write it out. I write out notes in my notes on my phone and then I do everything on my calendar in my phone. So I have it in three places, everything I need to know and I account for travel time, things going over. I always give myself a little bit extra time just because things happen because you want to be timely and in order to be professional, being on time is essential. So on that note, organization is huge especially i'm starting to hire girls now and keeping them in line making sure that we have systems in place so i can keep them accountable and make sure we're running smoothly is invaluable it's the most important part in order to get things done and help these dogs number 10 days are long so as a human being I've learned that one, I need to work out in order to stay mentally healthy. It's a super essential part of my day. And two, I have board and trains and they need to be walked because since everything's based around dog psychology, we have to do a lot of walking in order to instinctually balance them. And you can't rush the walks. The other thing is with in-home training sessions and day camp days, those sometimes go over, they are just long days. So sometimes if my first training session's at five, I'm waking up at three to walk the dogs beforehand. On day camp days when I have 13 hour work day, I'm waking up at three to get a workout in so I can get back to work and do day camp after a workout so I feel good about myself. So days are very, very long. You have to wake up early, you go to bed late, especially in Arizona, we wake up early to walk the dogs, we stay up late to walk the dogs so that they're not too hot in the summer. Um, so the days are long and tiring and it's one of those things and, and I think that goes back to number four is it has to be your number one thing Your family and your friends have to be so supportive because this isn't like any other job where you can clock in and clock out There's living beings relying on you and clients are working with living beings and anything can happen at any moment And you have to be available to them. So that's pretty much the deal is They're long days, but you love them when it comes down to it, being a dog trainer is probably the coolest thing that I've ever done. And I was talking to my trainer, Mike, about this the other day. He's like, what, what made it the dogs? And honestly, I couldn't tell him at first. And I still, to, to this day, I think I just was drawn to it and picked it and ran with it. And I didn't overthink becoming a dog trainer, which is so bizarre to say because it's my career. But I never overthought it and I just kind of jumped in and went head first and have been super patient with growing and making this a business and something I can survive off of. And I love it so much and I wouldn't replace it for anything. But if you're going to do it and just like if you're going to be successful at anything, you have to put in the work and you have to understand that it's not all fun and games. It's not all working with puppies. A lot of it is avoiding dog bites and making sure dogs aren't going to get into fights and walking into households where people are on edge and hate each other because of their dog. And you have to be great with people and communicate and it's taxing, but the most rewarding thing ever. I wouldn't change it for the world. I love it more than anything. And I know if you're considering it, I hope this was helpful for you because these are some things that I wish I could have sat down with a girlfriend and they could have told me over a glass of wine, but I just jumped head first into it. So, yep, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If there's any dog training videos you'd like to see, comment down below because I'd love to give them to you. Awesome, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.